Because they're beautiful people, I'm Celestine of Ghana Christian International High School. I will encourage you guys to subscribe to this club. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello there, and welcome to His Club TV. Before we begin with our discussions today, I would like to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. And um, if you have subscribed to, we thank you very much for your time. Please subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the channel to support us. This is the only channel that you get history, CRS, and government um, lessons based on the West African Senior Certificate Examination, the WASI um, syllables. Okay, and we also go beyond the syllables to also look at historical um, trending news. Okay, yeah, good. So um, today we are looking at the last um, series of wars that occurred or uh, between the 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 British and the Asante uh, Empire. So the last Anglo-Asante War, which was fought in 1900. And that's the, the topic for today. And basically, we are looking at the Ya Asantua uh, War of 1900. And this war, it's sometimes referred to as the, the Golden Stool War, all right? Um, the Golden Stool War because um, it was fought, or the reason for the war was because of the Golden Stool. Um, and, so, and so sometimes the war is referred to as the Golden Stool War. Okay, and um, in our previous lessons, we have been looking at the, the various Anglo Asante wars. Uh, we, we have looked at the Sagaranti War of 1874. We've also looked at the exile of Prempe. And this was the last Anglo-Asante War fought among the British and the Asante Empire. And after this war, the Asante Empire was finally added to the Gold Coast uh, by the British. So let's go in there and look at our lesson objectives for today. So our lesson objectives for today is simple. Um, that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to trace the events um, that led to the British Asante War, which is the Ya Asantoa War or the Golden Stool War. So what brought about the Ya Asantoa War or the Golden Stool War? So let's begin with our lessons. So the Ya Asantua War, um, also known as the Golden Stu War, I have already um, indicated that the war is also known as the Golden Stu War. And I have also said that it was a large series of wars that were fought between the British and the Asante Empire. So by way of reminding ourselves in our previous lesson, if you have not watched uh that um, lesson video i would add the link in the description at this time in the asante empire anna Prempe had been exiled okay um so there is no asante um as at 1900 because the asante Hine was exiled in 1897 and so like three years for like three years now there hadn't been any asante Hine in the asante empire kingdom so that is the background to this war so if you have not watched the reasons for the exile of Dana Prempe, please, the link is in, in the description. Click on it and watch that in order for you to understand whatever we are going to do here. So like I indicated earlier in our previous um, lessons, with many of the kings of the Asantes, you know, already in exile. So like I said, Dana Prempe the first was in exile. Uh, Napempe was in exile uh, and, and many other chiefs were also in exile. That was not enough. The Asante Empire also faced a new um, a new crisis, okay a new a new crisis um, in 1900 and this new uh, um, crisis was that the British governor demanded additional tributes to be paid 
you recall in the exile of Napempe, Napempe was asked to submit to the British governor, Sir Maxwell. And, and so after he left, three years later, the British came back to the Gold Coast, uh, to the Asante Empire and demanded for additional tributes. And also, they also demanded for the symbolic golden stool. The symbolic golden stool. And you, you all know the story behind the golden stool, which was conjured by Okonfo Anoche. Now, this golden stool, according to Okonfo Anoche, who um, conjured the golden stool from the sky, indicated that the spirit of the Asante Empire resided in the golden stool. And therefore, the day that the golden stool will be taken away from the Asante Empire, that will be the end of the empire. According to Okonfo Anoche, the empire will collapse when the golden stool is taken away. And so the golden stool became a unifying force. It was that stool that united the, the various states that formed the Asante Empire. Okay, and so the spirit of the empire resided in the golden stool. And so the British demanded the golden stool from the Asante Empire. And so what happened was that on March um, 28th, okay, on March um, 28th, that was 1900, there was a Grand Deba held in Kumasi, and this um, Grand Deba was organized by the governor, Sir Frederick Hudson, okay. So Sir Frederick Hudson was the one who was the British governor who demanded for the golden stool um, within their premises. So the, the Deba organized by Sir Frederick Hudson took place within the premises of Kumasi Fort, which is now called the Yasantua Fort. So you know the Kumasi Fort, um, those who, who happen to know the Kumasi Fort, uh, the red building um, in the doom opposite the Vodafone, um, the Vodafone, um, um, the Vodafone headquarters or so, yes. In the doom opposite there, there is this uh, um, red building there. That was the Kumasi Fort. So the, the Deba was held at that place. And it is reported that um, Sir Freddie Hudson told the chiefs of the of the Asante Empire who had guarded because now there is no Asante here. And so, of course, uh, he told them that now their chief or their king, Nana Prempe, is in exile. And therefore, the golden stool should be given to him to sit on because now he is their king. Okay. And I don't blame um, Freddie Hudson for, for that because now um, the head of the empire has been exiled. So all the other chiefs have, I mean at the Deba were just nothing to him okay and so he said that he was now their new king and so the golden stool should be brought for him to sit on now this demand made by Frederick Hudson was considered by the Asante as as a disrespect because bear in mind that the golden stool is a sacred object. Um, uh, it's not a stool that you sit on. Even the Asantehine does not sit on the golden stool. And I'll show you the image of the stool in the next slide. The Asantehine does not even sit on the golden stool. All right. And so for you to come and say that we should give you the golden stool to sit on, that was more or less like a taboo to the Asante empire or nation. Okay, and so look on your right here. This is the image of the golden stool. This. So you even see that it is not a stool in that sense as in a stool that you sit on, but it is just um, 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 a symbolic, you know, something. So you see that even the golden stool is sitting on another black stool. So the golden stool is something that they display um, in public once in a while when they are having 
their funerals. So you, um, I mean, their festivals. So at times you see that the the goddess to be beside the Asante him would be just beside him. Okay, so I'm sure this is the stool of the Asante him here. And then the goddess to will be beside him here. So the goddess stool is not actually a stool that you sit on. So for Frederick Hudson to have demanded this, uh, the people felt that that was disrespectful. You understand? And don't also forget that the golden stool was very essential to the Asante army because of all them, to the Asante nation, because of what Okonfanoche had told them. Now look at this image here. This is the original footage of Ya Asantoa, um, the, the woman who led the, the war. But let's go continue with the war, with the, with the, with the lesson. I'll come back to explaining those images right there. So after the governor made that request, all the chiefs present at the Deba were quiet. They were all mute. They were all dumb. They all went quiet. Huh? Like, you really want to sit on the golden stool? Come on, how do you do this? How do you demand to sit on the good news too? That is impossible. And you know, um, um, looking at what uh, Maxwell did to Nana Pempe, Nana Pempe was actually humiliated, you know, um, in 1897. So I'm sure these chiefs, uh, remembering what Nana Pempe went through, actually were afraid for their lives. And when Nana Pempe was exiled to as well, um, his chiefs were not informed as to where Nana Pempe was taken to. So I'm sure none of them wanted to be to be a victim of, of maybe exile, you understand? So the Mampohini was there, um, the Bekwai Hini, Mampohini was there, the Bekwai Hini was there, the Kokofu Hini was also there, including the Jabin Hini. They were all at the Deba. And so, according to records, they all kept mute. None of them could say a word to Sir Frederick Hudson. And I can imagine Sir Frederick Hudson standing in in the midst of the Deva, you know, you know how some of these white behave. Just talking anyhow, you know, behaving shaking their body anyhow. Give me this two to sit on, you know, give me this two to sit on. Where is this two? Come bring, come bring it. You know, that, that kind of behavior. I'm just imagining. But interestingly, when all these chiefs kept quiet, Nana yeah Asantua, who was the the queen mother of a Jusso, a suburb around Kumasi. So this is Nanaya Asantua, as I'm talking about. He was a queen mother of a Jusso. He stood up and, and then he rallied the Asante's resistance uh, with the following fiery statements. Okay, so it is r recorded that Nanaya Asantua said that if you chiefs are going to behave like cowards who are too um, frightened to fight, then exchange your Leon clubs with my undergarment. And this is a, a, a proverbial statement which were made in those days. In those days, the women, they wear something we call undergarment. Okay. And so the leons were the ones that we used to fight. So if you, the, the women were the ones who, I mean, men do not wear under, undergarment. No. Uh, and so if you, the men, would be, I mean, women, and then you would not fight back. Then you give me, of course, the lion that you used to fight, and I'll also give you my undergarment. So you'll be the woman and I'll be the man. That is what this um, fairy statement, you know, um, meant. And so, yeah, Asantua stood up because, yeah, Asantua um, felt that um, yeah. to the British or to Frederick Hudson, um, the golden stool only meant money to him. And indeed, it meant money. Um, to them because most of the artifact or most of the artworks that were stolen by these um, Europeans are today found in their museums, all right? And they are making money out of it. And I have done um, a video on the stolen art. So you can go through my videos and, and also have a look at some of the artworks which were stolen from Benin, from Nigeria, from uh, Egypt and co. Very interesting. Um, there and so to your asantua the good news to only meant money to the british or sir frederick uh, sir frederick Hudson. however to the asante nation it meant something extraordinary um um to them 
Okay, so yeah, Asantua stood up um, and then with his war uh, garment there in the picture, he rallied against and then he led the Asante army into the war. So such was the bravery, influence and charisma of a woman who led the Asante against the British. And this was the first time uh, an Asante woman had actually done um, this, you know. And the Asantua felt that um, with um, Nana Prempe not in place, uh, I mean, they, they should do something because it was even a disgrace um, for the whole Asante unit to be exiled and nobody knows his whereabouts. Um, considering the power that the Asante Empire welded in the in the country, I mean, from the northern part of the country to the eastern part of the country to the western part of the country to the southern part uh, of the country, and now that once powerful empire's king has been exiled and nothing is being done about it. Three years on, nothing has been done. So I'm sure that enough, uh, yeah, Asantua was was very very furious at the at the British for coming back again after all that they had done to their king. So let's take a look at the outcome of the war. What led to the I mean the outcome of the war. So yeah Asantua duly mobilized the Asante for war. Alright so he he mobilized the Asante for war. And then uh, Asante at the end of the war was defeated by the British in that war. So Asante um, in that war was defeated uh, which means they lost the war to the British and it is not surprising because uh, Asante at this time uh, you know has been has been has been I mean looking at the 1874 war a Sagaranti war in which the whole of Kumasi was bent down and so the, 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 the army was weakened the morale even was not there anymore because um, Nana Prempe has been exiled you know that that's i mean that alone kills the morale of the of the of the troops at that time so yeah asantua lost the war um and consequently after the asante's defeat yeah i mean asantua went into hiding um yeah asantua went into hiding in a village called um Sresu Timpumu. um Sresu Timpumu. now um before we even Look at that. Don't don't think that the war was what was just the British won the war on a on a silver platter. No. They really suffered. They they really, really suffered. Um according to records, yeah, Santua and the troops fought the British very well. Um to the extent that they were even trapped in the fort. Okay, and the fort is somewhere we have mm -hmm. the military um museums. Um to the extent that they were trapped in the fort. Okay. The British were trapped in the fort. Um, they had to call for uh, reinforcement from Cape Coast. So it's it's it was not that easy, you know. Um, the British did not did not did not win the war on a silver platter. They had to they, they they had to even some of them had to sneak out. Some of the British that were trapped in the in the fort. I think the the governor and the wife had to be you know sneak out. Um, to Cape Coast and then uh, call for reinforcement be, to to arrive from Cape Coast before they were able to 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 take down the Asante army, um, Asantua and her forces. So it, it wasn't a war won on a silver platter by the British. But then at the end, yeah, Asantua went into hiding in Sresu Timpumu, and uh, it is said that a certain uh, two. Um, males uh, a, a male and female known as yapatia and then uh, kwamitria two citizens of express uh, they took a proverbia is something that they say is oral tradition we don't know how true so that is but it is on record that they took 30 pieces of silver from the british and then they showed them where the queen mother was um, um hiding and so this paved the way for the capture of ya asantua and uh, uh, and subsequent exile to Seychelles Island, and she died there on October seventeenth, um, nineteen twenty one. So yeah, Asantua eventually was captured. It it wasn't only her that were captured. They also 
they also captured some attendants and some people with her and um, he was she and the other those who were captured were also added to Nana Prempe in Seychelles Island and yeah Asantua lived in Seychelles Island from 1900 to 1921 when she died in Seychelles Island so yes um, that was the 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 uh, I mean the yeah Asantua war all about so I mean like what can we make of of this war what can we make of this war you see so even though yeah Asantua um you know was not um successful um in the war that he was she she and the army of the Asante were defeated but that did not that did not end there you see the goodies to which the British wanted they didn't get it and so in a way yeah Asantua, even though he was captured I don't think that she was defeated because the purpose of the war the ultimate goal of the war was not achieved by the British. The Asantis managed to protect the Golden Stu from the British. And so I think that the Asantis were victorious, you know, in that war. Because I'm thinking that had it not been Ya Asantua and then the Golden Stu was captured by the British, what would have happened would be that the Golden Stu will be sitting today in Oxford Museum with a tag. That, that even annoys me. With the tag, they put, they, uh, they, 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 I mean, they describe the stool on a small paper, and then they will, they will, they will attach it to the stool. This is the golden stool of the Asante nation. It was captured by the British in 1900. And some, you know, things I don't want to, some nonsense things I don't want to talk about. That is how they would have captured the golden stool. Today, as I'm talking to you, there are so many Asante artifacts in Oxford um, museums in abroad. And so, for Ya Asantua to be able to uh, defend the Golden Stool to the extent that it was not taken by the, by the uh, British, I think she deserves an applaud. And this is why she remains one of the, um, the most loved and uh, adored um, historical figure in the Asante uh, uh, Empire or in the Asante history or the history of Ghana at large. Now, more so, look at the uh, um, um, the attitude of the British um, from 1874, 1900, 1897, there about. You see, their attitude was more or less um, to break the the spirit of the Asante nation. So you see that an Apempe is exiled because he was trying to stand on their, you know, be an impediment to uh, their aim of colonizing the Asante army. Now, again, the Asantua comes in there as, say, as a successor to Nana Prempe to also prevent the British from doing some, I mean, a certain things. So I think at this time, they were keen on, on colonizing the Asante nation. And so whoever tried to come around will be exiled. Okay, and also bear in mind that this was um, in, uh, 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 as a result of the Berlin Conference of 1888, um, um, whereby they signed an agreement in the Berlin Act that nations or European nations should not establish colonies in name only. They should move in there to establish what is known as the effective occupation. And so that is what was pushing the British to actually take over the Asante army and not leave any stone on ten. And so, yes, that is what we have to say about the yeah, Asantua war. So this was the last war fought between the British and the Asante nation. And after this war, um, the British and the Asante nation never fought again. Asante became a protectorate, became part of the, the Gold Coast. And now the British had been successful in their objective to colonize the Gold Coast, and so they did. And then this is how Asante became part of the Gold Coast or became part of the British colony. Good. So I know you have been there educated. If you have any question, any um, any topic you may 
want us to look at um, kindly um, type it in the comment section we will do that for you thank you very much for your time and subscribe to the channel TV. Thanks, Thanks,